Hello, I'm Greg Wolf. I've been teaching science in Vermont for about 30 years. Let's talk about the density of gases and let's do it in a way that students will have a blast. I've got a flask here. Why is it that some gases tend to flow downhill and other gases want to flow uphill? Because they each have their own density. This one happens to be methane out of a typical gas jet. This one was propane. Propane is much more dense than air. Let's talk about the density of gases. To start this investigation, I just blow some common soap bubbles. And the kids watch these fall to the ground and they take a look at the speed that they fall. And then I tell them what would happen or ask them what would happen if we do the same, but we blow bubbles with different gases. So we write down on a data table that soap bubbles filled with air sink. They call it a medium speed, but they don't have anything relative to compare it to yet. Then we blow some methane bubbles. You could do these out of your common gas jets in your science lab. Pour some soap solution into a petri dish and blow some methane bubbles. And the kids will see that these bubbles float to the ceiling. We'll get to lighting those on fire later on in this investigation. So they write down that methane bubbles float. They don't know whether it's float fast or float slow. Again, they have nothing to compare to. Then we blow some bubbles with propane. The kids will see that the propane bubbles sink and they sink a little bit faster than they did with air. So they write down propane sinks fast. We do the same with carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide sinks fast. If I happen to have a helium tank that year, we'll blow some bubbles with helium. Helium floats fast. It floats faster than methane. And we start talking about why that'll happen. By the way, as a side note, the carbon dioxide bubble and the propane bubble sink at about the same rate, both pretty fast, but about the same rate. So I asked the kids, how would you know the difference between the propane and the carbon dioxide? And they say, oh, that's great. Let's have bubble races. Kids come up with bubble races in every class. Let's have bubble races. So then we talk about the errors with a bubble race. It might have an extra little dribble of bubble on it. We talk about the fact that an extra little dribble of bubble solution may not seem that much in the human world, but to a bubble, that's like carrying an elephant. So that's not going to work. Also, the different size bubbles will affect the rate of, of fall. So uh, we say that bubble races won't necessarily work. So that gets us to the point where we're going to start the lab, where we're actually going to calculate the density of gases and it's a really cool technique. I think you'll enjoy this. So this is the setup we're gonna use. It's really a slick operation. We've just got a 250 milliliter flask with a rubber stopper, two holes with some glass bends coming through, some rubber tubing on our glass bends and some pinch cock clamps on the ends. I make the students start by doing the density of air. The reason for that being simply if they screw up, all they need to do is open up the flask and they can start all over again without any problem, without me needing to fill the flasks up with new gas. So we're ready to go. We find uh, the mass of this system as it is. So we put this on the digital balance and we'll see that the digital balance reads, in this case, 200.99. So we'll write down and I've included a data table for you to look at, but 200.99. Now we're gonna pull with a syringe, we've got a 60 ml syringe, we're gonna pull the air out of the flask. So to do that, we simply put the syringe on the rubber hose. Normally two partners would be doing this, but I'm working alone right now. So I'm gonna pinch the clamp onto the glass tubing to hold it open, but Normally one partner pulls and the other partner opens the clamp. So I pull a syringe of gas out, I close the clamp, I release the gas, and I tell the students you gotta pull six syringes out. 
Now already, by the time they pull their second syringe of gas out, they should start to see a vacuum forming in the flask, and they'll know that because the syringe barrel will want to pull back in on its own. It's a nice discussion about air pressure if you want to get into that. But we'll pull that second one out, close the clamp. It is important that the students know that they can never release the syringe without the clamp being on, or gas will re-enter, air will re-enter the flask. So. There's our second one out. We'll pull another four out. It should get quite hard pulling back. So now we are back on the digital balance and we find out that the new mass is 200.71 grams. We're gonna find the difference between those in a moment, but for now, this is the part that the kids love, and uh, to this day, even after 30 years, it still amazes me. So how much gas did we pull out of here? Well, we know how many grams of gas we pulled out of here, but how much volume of gas did we pull out of here? And the kids, again, love this because it's not like you can see a drop in the gas level here, but if you take a bucket of water, and I use a battery jar just because it's clear and it's more, uh, visual. You put this under water and you open a clamp and water will come rushing in like a fountain into your jar. I have so much suction this time that the clamp, the uh, rubber tubing doesn't want to open up. There we go. You don't normally get that kind of volume with this. So water rushed in. And the amount of water that rushed in is exactly equal to the volume of gas that we removed. So now we're going to pour this into a graduated cylinder. And we read the cylinder. This happens to be 189 milliliters. So let's see what we have here. We have our starting mass and our ending mass, giving us a difference of 28 hundredths of a gram that we pulled out of the container. That resulted in a volume of 189 milliliters of water being pulled out. When we do our density calculations, mass divided by volume, we take our mass, we take our volume, and that gives us a measured density of air of 0 0.00149. And the actual density of air is here, 0 0.00127, giving us a difference of only two ten thousandths of a gram per cubic centimeter. So remarkably good results with a fairly rudimentary system of measurement. Let me show you how to do the other gases. After achieving satisfactory results with air, I have the students move on to doing methane right out of the methane jets because our supply is limitless and uh, I don't want them to move on to the expendable gases until they've proven that they can handle the procedure. So to hook on the methane, no big deal, but we will hold the flask upside down and hook on uh, so that the methane, which is less dense than air, collects at the top of the flask and it will push the air out. And the fact that it pushes the air out means that we need to remember, and students need to remember, to open up the second clamp as well. It's obvious to open up this clamp, but they need to have the air escape, so they have to open up that second clamp. When filling with propane, we can simply go right side up. Again, important to have both clamps open. And I'm not sure if, uh, if it's commonplace to have these or not, but on a standard tank that we pick up from one of our local gas supply companies, you can buy one of these regulators fairly inexpensively. This gives you access to carbon dioxide or argon or helium, depends what you want to use for gases in this lab. 
So that's the lab portion of what we needed to do, but uh, you probably came to this video more for the fun demonstrations that you can do instead of just talking you through a lab. So let me show you a couple things. Uh, first off, I'll mention that if you're not comfortable using the flammable gases in the way that I did, like pouring it out of the flask in the beginning, you can always start very small as I used to do with just a test tube of propane. So let me just show you that. I'll put a tiny bit of propane in into the test tube. And then you can light the propane on fire with just a little bit of propane. If we can get past the childproof lighter. And then you can pour the propane out and you can show them that you can control the flow of the fluid. So you can start small. You don't need to do a flask full of propane if you're not comfortable with that. So here's another fun one you can do. We can put some carbon dioxide into a flask, a graduate cylinder, anything. And then because carbon dioxide flows downhill, as we just learned from the lab, we can pour it onto a candle and it will put out the candle. So let's step up the demonstrations to, uh, to the next level. The kids like this. By the way, as a quick side note, if you don't have a propane tank, you can do that one by generating carbon dioxide simply by putting Alka-Seltzer in water, generate the carbon dioxide, pour it off. Or if you had dry ice, even better, you could use the dry ice to form the carbon dioxide and pour it out over some candles. Stepping up the excitement just a little bit, we can pour some bubble solution into a Petri dish. And we can now blow those same bubbles with methane. And we can light our methane bubbles on fire. The kids love that, but they love this next one even more. So what I've got going here is a rubber tube hooked up to a soda bottle that I've just cut down with a rubber stopper in the bottom with a one hole stopper glass tube coming through and a clamp on the end just to hold the bubble solution inside. And this is hooked up to the methane jet. So we turn on the gas, we undo the clamp. and the methane will bubble through the bubble solution. Because methane is less dense than air, it's going to make a snake that comes basically straight up and down. You can let the snake get as large as you'd like, as comfortable as you are with it, and then just make sure you're not near any of your school's smoke detectors or heat detectors. Come on. Kids love that one, but there's an even better one. This demonstration is one of the kids' favorites of my two-year loop with them. You can size it up or size it down depending on your comfort level, but basically you just take a can, a coffee can of some sort, a peanut can, poke a hole in the bottom, poke a hole in the lid, fill the can with methane. Remember methane is less dense than air, so we're gonna hold it upside down. Got my finger over the end. Fill the can with methane. Put the lid back on. You're gonna to wanna to prop up the bottom of the can. And we 
we light the methane on fire. This one has a nice startling end. And forgive me for not having my goggles on. I think in the last demo, I didn't have them on either. So even the experts get stuck on that one every now and then. Not sure how well this is gonna show up on camera. I'll try zooming in on it for you. watching. Kids love that one. Perhaps some of you are not comfortable with the idea of lighting things on fire or maybe your school just won't tolerate it. Uh, I'm fortunate to work in a school that gives us pretty free reign as long as we're being safe. So uh, what you can do is put some carbon dioxide into a jar and blow some bubbles into this jar. Something interesting happens and the kids love seeing this. We'll give that a moment to fill. By the way, when I do this demo for the kids, I don't show them filling the flask, filling the battery jar, and then we blow some bubbles in. Sometimes it takes a minute to get the one you want. Fortunately, with this video, I'll be able to fast forward. There we go. So the bubble just hovers on top of the carbon dioxide. In this case, the carbon dioxide was heavier than air, sunk to the bottom, and the bubble was not able to penetrate. Now, I don't have any helium here today, but the other thing you can do is flip the jar over, fill it with helium, and then blow a methane bubble into it. Now, the methane bubbles will float, but they are heavier than, more dense than the helium. So a methane bubble will float in the room, but it will then hover in the upside down jar because it cannot penetrate the helium. It's a great demo. The kids, again, love that one. So I hope you have some fun with all this. Uh, shoot me an email if you have any questions. I'm always happy to help. You've got the lab sheet, and uh, I hope it's really successful for you. Um, this is one of the greatest units. The kids have a blast with it, and uh, why not have fun while learning? It's the best. Have a great day.